I'm Bonnie Kimke. Welcome to my studio and welcome to Quilting on a Thread. This video is the fourth video in my undetermined number of um, videos covering my quilt journey on the Color My World quilt pattern by Wendy Williams. Links to buy this pattern will be in the description of this video, so please check that out. As I've already mentioned, I don't necessarily follow a um, paper piecing pattern by the book. It's the way my mind works. I need to go from the center out. So I'll be doing the inner road next. And so, as I've mentioned before, Miss Williams is very detailed in her directions. She kindly separates out the pieces you need for the upper road from the pieces you need for the inner road. And in case you haven't caught it, this is block five within the pattern. Um, so I'm actually going to split block five up. I'm going to do the inner road now and I'll be doing the outer road later. There's two pieces of template that we'll be using and that's going to be explained a little bit later. Um, but there are two three inch strips that are with the fabric. Now that's the one thing she does not mention in her book because that's the assumption if you're cutting a strip that it's probably with the fabric. If it's length of fabric that would have been specified. So there's two three inch strips with the fabric of the charcoal. There's also two one and three quarter inch strips with the fabric of the charcoal and a single seven eighths inch with um, strip with the fabric out of the white. So for the three inch strips, we cross cut those into three inch pieces themselves. So we have three inch squares. You should have 16 of those. Now <clears throat> for the white strips and the narrower charcoal strips, we sewed those together and then subcut those into two and three quarter inch strips. You're going to starch each one of the strips and repress them. Don't Move the iron across as you're pressing. Starch, let the starch dry. I use Best Press. So let that dry and then take your iron and press down on the individual pieces. If you iron, you're going to wind up stretching and moving the pieces around. And inevitably, then one of your strips is going to be longer than you expect it to be. Then Go ahead and stitch them as um, Miss Williams describes in the Color My World pattern. So you want to stitch the um, one piece of the charcoal to the white. Then you want to go ahead and iron that towards the charcoal. Then bring the other piece in and stitch it going in the opposite direction because that's going to balance out the... Um, it's going to balance out your stitches because if you stitch them both going in the same direction, um, what you're going to have is you're going to have this wonking of your piece. So after that's all done and ironed, then cut it into two and three quarter inch strips. So these become your the white lines in the middle of your road. So then we have this piece here. Now you could cut this piece out of plastic templating or freezer paper. And instead of just using plastic templating, I'm going to go ahead and iron those on and then you trim to the edge. Um, I've chosen to iron them on and trim to the edge because with something this small and a plastic template, as you start cutting it, um, it's going to be quite easy for things to move around. This way they won't move around. So let me iron one of these on and um, well let me move you into a position where you can see what I'm doing. 
Okay, so here we are, and what we want to do is we want to center that guideline down the center of the seam. Uh, you know, the, the guideline needs to be in the center of the white line, is all I'm really trying to say. So then set that here, and it doesn't matter if it's on the top or the back. If you feel more comfortable doing it on the back, then certainly do it on the back. And then I'm just going to iron that on. So it's thoroughly ironed on. And then I'm going to take a straight edge, you know, a good ruler, and my rotary cutter. Cut that off. Then a pair of scissors to just trim the lower and upper off. And then just come here. and peel that off and now you have a nice piece of road. So I'm going to do that, all the rest of the line pieces, and I'm going to get those ready to sew. So here we are with the last piece and the reason why I stopped here to peel off the last piece is I wanted you to see what happens to that freezer paper after so many pieces. Now I knew there was a good chance that I would run out of stick for this and there was enough stick for cutting but there wouldn't have been enough stick for taking this to the sewing machine and sewing. So I had these extra pieces cut out of, of this same template but um, I didn't need them. This one is useless now. It went through these 16 pieces barely. So for the roadway building itself, I have several pieces because I know I will go through those. So what we do for the roadway pieces, we have the guideline pieces and we have our three inch squares. So you can start on whichever side you choose. But what we're going to do is I'm just going to start on the regular road side and I'm going to iron this on the back side of the pattern because remember this will wind up being the back of my actual um, roadway and this will be the front so let's go ahead and iron that in place bring my add a quarter in and pre-cut that Remember, I like to pre-cut because it makes gives me something to line things up with. And that's going to be especially necessary here because you want to make sure that it lines up right in the middle of that guideline. You might want to take a pin and go through where this line is and just see to it that it's in the middle of your stitch, but you won't want that pin in the way while you're sewing. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. So I'm back having stitched that line and we will once again do the fold over like we've done in the past. And we'll come over here, bring it back to our, bring it back to our um, ironing mat. And I always like, especially when I have a seam that I'm sewing across, I like to come in and just press that down real good to make sure that that seam lies as flat as possible. So I'm going to come along here then and iron up to my stitch line. And if you take that pin again and you poke it, in there, you're going to find that you're coming right out 
in the middle of your line, which is what you want. So I'm going to do my pre-cut. And I'll pull over another piece. So that's going to go back to back. And I'll stitch that line and we'll continue along moving from piece to piece to piece. So this will probably get used three or four times and then I'll pick up one of my other pattern pieces. But I'll be back when I have all my roadway stitched. All right, so I wanted to show you what it looks like when we've finished ironing and seaming all of our pieces on one section of the roadway. And so this is what it looks like on the back, and we're going to trim this out before we move on to the next piece. And this is what it looks like on the front. And if we take that same pin that we've been using before, and we go ahead and stick in there, you see we're in the middle of the roadway, I mean in the middle of the center line. Do that, we're in the middle of the center line. Come here. We're in the middle of the center line. In the middle of the center line. That's what those guidelines are for, is to help you make sure that your pieces are in the middle of that roadway. That your center lines are right there in the middle of that roadway. Now here we are, and we need to trim these out. Um, this ruler is flat, the shorter of my out of squares. This is the original, and so it's flat. So this is good for me to use to trim these out. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim the straight edges out. Then a pair of scissors to trim the rounded sides. And there's our first section of roadway. And we're going to use up all these pieces to get to our full roadway. So in the meantime, I'm just going to go ahead and peel this off carefully, just like I did with the Mariner's Compass, the Mariner's Star. And so I'm going to peel these off. And I'm going to reuse this piece of... of um, Reuse this piece of freezer paper as often as I can, you know, until it no longer has that good stick. This piece will get ironed and pressed again to make sure that it stays nice and crisp for when we piece it together to make the entire circle of the roadway. So then when you have all of these individual pieces sewn together, you're going to have eight sectors of road. So the next thing to do is, of course, sew the sectors of road together, maintaining a um, one-quarter inch seam, and then I would suggest you go ahead and iron them, press them, you know, press them over in the same direction that you've been pressing so that you have a constant appearance on your work. And, you know, since you've trimmed these out, it should be very, very easy. So I'm going to go ahead and sew one of these, iron it, and come back and show you what it will look like. So here we are, and this piece has been sewn together to give us a larger arc. So here it is. I'm just going to go ahead and iron this off in the same direction that 
the rest of the pressing has been. And that's what you have for that piece. And I'll continue with all the rest of these. And the next time you see me, they'll be up on my design wall in a circle. So here we are with the inner road completely sewn out in a circle. And if you maintain that perfect quarter inch seam allowance on every single one of your seams, you're going to have a nice flat road. So that gives you a better idea of what everything is going to look like when it gets sewn together. And in fact, that's what we'll be doing on the next video in this series. And you're going to get a lot more sewing time because you're going to see how I sew this together so that it still lays beautifully flat. Look, I hope this is helping you out in your journey, and I hope to see you again here on Quilting on a Thread.